Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, y'all. This is Dr. Triffy. We got a special one for y'all tonight. It is a lovely Sunday evening, and I think it's a gift. I think I've been re I've, I've been gifted an opportunity to have a wonderful, wonderful conversation with y'all tonight. Come on into the room and share the live as you come into the room. Come on, y'all. It's a special night. A very special night. Come in. Dr. Tripping. AKA Dr. Tripping. A big story. Come in, get the live. Let's work together. Let's heal together. Let's get better together. Good evening, good evening. I am Dr. Triffy. I am Dr. Triffy, aka Dr. Tripping. This is the second episode of Dominica Diaspora Stories. And we have a story tonight. Have you heard the story? Hmm? The only people who haven't heard the story might be people who don't live on Dominica. Because if you're from the Caribbean island of Dominica, not to be confused with the Dominican Republic, you probably have heard this story. Hmm? This is what CNN wrote. Man survives on ketchup for weeks, lost at sea. And the story goes on to say, a man who spent 24 days adrift, 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 eh? in the Caribbean Sea, says he survived by eating little more than ketchup. Elvis Francois, 47, was found 120 nautical miles northwest of Colombia's Puerto Bolivar after a plane saw the word help engraved on the hull of his sailboat. And that came from the Colombian Navy. And according to Elvis, based on what the paper wrote, I had no food. It was just a bottle of ketchup that was on the boat, garlic powder, and Maggie cubes. So I mixed it up with some water. 
and and the reporter who wrote this was Heather Chen, Angus Watson, Mitchell McCluskey, and Stefano Posibon of CNN. I'm Dr. Triffy. Thank you for joining me for Dominica Diaspora Stories. This is another story of love and loss and the will to win. You'll be meeting the Heinz guy, Mr. Elvis Foissois. You'll also be meeting Mr. Peter Winsty Winston, who thankfully coordinated this interview for me and for us, and who is also joining in to support Elvis, although we will be mostly speaking with Elvis. Now, for people like me who grew up on an island, you learn deep respect and love for the sea because the sea is your constant companion. We're an island, so we're surrounded by the sea. You learn that the sea can be your friend, but it can also be your foe. I personally have deep fascination with the sea. It's a place where I myself spent lots of years. And the Dominicans are gonna understand this, roasting pepin and cayi, to the point where I was called a kawad bodlame because I loved it so much. But I also have a lot of rage towards the sea. It took me a long time to process that rage because as I've shared with some of you on previous podcasts, my mother was a huckster in Dominica and she was traveling on a boat called the Penelope from Dominica to St. Martin and the boat sank. There were about eight other passengers who didn't make it. We never recovered her body, it took a long time to recover. So when I heard Elvis's story, I knew right away I wanted to speak with him because I'm so happy that although the sea almost took him, which is something we tend to say in Dominica, we say something to the effect that everything goes back down into the sea, he made it out alive. And we the people of Dominica, we are people of stories. We are known for our Creole language, Kant and Tim, Tim Boishesh and stories that our elders, you know, they would use Powerball little stories to transfer wisdom, secrets, and lessons to us. So tonight I'm hoping we can explore Elvis's story with him, support him as a community. These days we can't sit in the village as much anymore and gather around him and listen to him tell the story over and over and over again, but we understand the power of storytelling to help us move through trauma. And so I'm hoping we can do that for Elvis tonight and sit and listen as he tells us his survival story. So Elvis. Hello, good night. Yes, sir. Welcome, 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 welcome Elvis. Thank you so much for saying yes. To doing this with me okay where are you now i see a beautiful sign behind um you. i'm at um red rock Kalibishi. Mm -hmm. yeah so red rock what is red rock red rock is a site a tourist site where um, go ahead you have a bar mm -hmm. and um yeah so that's where um, I, I have at the moment. Very nice. Thank you. So the Red Rocks, y'all, for those of you who've never never been to Kalibishi in Dominica, the Red Rocks, are they look like the rocks in Utah or Arizona. Yeah? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sight. So thank you so much, Elvis. So Elvis, what I do here on Diaspora Stories, so I talk to people from Dominica to hear their stories of how did you how did you leave Dominica and end up somewhere else okay so 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 how did you leave Dominica what's your story of leaving Dominica well I had some issue um, I had some problem with my family mm -hmm. which um, I go through um, some difficulties in life and um, no, um, I had issue with my family 
my house I build and um, what I cultivated my to earn my living. Mm -hmm. You know, um, while I was on the market, somebody put um, fire in my home. Um, so um, I don't know really exactly who did it, but um, mm -hmm. seeing that I was on the market selling, mm -hmm. I, I plant my stuff and went to the market. Mm -hmm. And um, so while I've been, if I go down um, on the market like Thursday, mm -hmm. I'll be up Saturday afternoon. When the market okay. So um, I was selling night time also. And um, I had a stall, uh -huh. a village, and a craft shop, which they come and break, break it down. And um, the certain people of the village, they break it down. Um, so um, all those things I try to do to benefit the village and myself and the young people, mm -hmm. they try to destroy it. So I get kind of frustrated and I leave, try to go far away from Dominica mm. because because of that I didn't have an at attorney to represent yeah. me. Yes. Yeah. They set me up. They set me up. They, I had four trees of marijuana, although they had talked about it. Mm -hmm. And they said I broke a bridge order. The officers then brutalized me. Mm -hmm. Still charged me. Mm -hmm. Um, seven thousand seven thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. So um all that I get frustrated and I try to go as far as possible from Dominica. Wow. Because, so, go ahead. Because the morning they come at, they came at my home, I know I had four trees of marijuana. I agreed to to take my charge for my four trees. Mm -hmm. It was not enough and they, they start to brutalize me. And so they give me five charges. Um, which mm -hmm. I had no problem at all. Mm -hmm. But forcing political trees and I end up off that kind of destroy my life. So after I go through all those um difficulties, mm -hmm. I leave because um I had to pay that money. Mm -hmm. So um I had to give them something like four thousand dollars because can, things was kind of difficult. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a room to sleep because both of the house I was sleeping, they put fire in they, they put fire they put fire in it and no police didn't arrest nobody. I never got no assistance to so all those struggles I was going through. Mm -hmm. Wow. I lived Dominica and went because I know I could make a life out there. Mm -hmm. So I live I live from Dominica to go to St. Martin. Mm -hmm. But the people I went to St. Martin for, they refused to pay me. So um, I, I, I live, I was doing well still mm -hmm. in uh, Dominica. Mm -hmm. By a lot of plants and I was planting vegetables and always on the market with my stuff. Mm -hmm. That's how I could afford to pay, pay the government. Mm -hmm. so, so, so Elvis, you're saying you were a farmer Yes. For the most part, you planted your crops and right. you also were on the water, like you did fishing and stuff like that as yes. well. Uh -huh. yes. And you would go down to the market, which market, like Portsmouth Market? Portsmouth and Roseau. Portsmouth and Roseau. And you also had a stall close to right. the roadside. But, yeah. but people came and broke it down. Broke it down. Yeah, and they also up. set fire right. to your home. Yeah. That's heavy that's a lot yes so i was kind of frustrated yeah so i decided i want to go far away from dominica because if people doing all that and the law is not acting mm -hmm. so and it's only me they seeing because i mean i have four trees of marijuana at my home mm -hmm. yes but that don't mean you should brutalize me when you say brutalize what do you mean well um put the handcuff very tight and dragged me wow for four trees yes and um they said um, i break a bridge order which it wasn't true and um i think the magistrate was drunk <laughs> so he just 
he just put everything on my back with not no consideration nothing never going to the files the details because the report i had a report from the prison um i was brutalized mm -hmm. and um he never even looked up to it wow. so that is the kind of thing that made me want to get out of dominica so you felt I, so frustrated you right. left yes but then when you went to St. Martin, it seems like you ran into some more struggles. Yes, because the people I went St. Martin, I went St. Martin for. Mm -hmm. Like when you said to go for, you went there to work, like as if you... No, send, some, somebody sent me to St. Martin. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was like, um, I didn't want to go, but they first kind of forced me to go. So um, first they asked me if I could um, br bring a yacht down to Roseau. Mm -hmm. I said, um, no problem, because I know I'm capable of bringing it to Roseau. Mm -hmm. But while on my way to Roseau, they bring, um, I see a next boat come, and they bring nine people, nine, I would say ten people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, they tell me then, the, the, the two other fellas with me, they went down from the boat. I was making my way to go down. They tell me I can't leave. So um, they threatened me. So I had to go St. Martin and deliver the nine people for them. Wow. Which they take my phone so I couldn't have no contact. Mm -hmm. And they call. Um, so I tried to call, call Dominica for somebody to help me, but I had no phone. Mm -hmm. So they fella sent up with me. To be in charge of the situation mm -hmm. i do anything wrong because they have nine people against me nine ten people against me and it's me alone so i have to go with their orders that's how i really reach in um san martin wow now one of them that person will come in the fish fisheries at newton they was on the border at mm -hmm. newton fisheries so that is the kind of thing the people they have government jobs and they have opportunity to help people but they try to destroy people's life if he um when i see um i was in saint martin and going through all the difficulties how long how long were you in saint martin so okay so you drop you drop your your force to take these people to saint martin these nine yes. people and what happens? You stay in St. Martin? Yes, I stay in St. Martin because I had no money to come back to Dominica. And he, he came back to um, St. Martin mm -hmm. and he picked up the next guy and he leave me because I didn't have documents to come back home. Mm. Because from the market, I go for me to bring the yacht down. Mm -hmm. to but on the way to Roseau, that is what happened. So that is how I end up off being without papers. So you were in St. Martin now without papers and right. now you have to try to find 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 work. I have to find ways to survive, to eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because without documents, you can hardly work, you can hardly move around. Right. So um, So how did you do that? How did you get something? Well, I had that? family members and because of my talent, it was kind of easy for me to able to do something that somebody would appreciate what I do. Mm-hmm. So um, I I made that year. Yes. And seeing that I did not mean some ways to come back, but uh, they addressed me so that I could come back down with a, 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 a vessel also. Come back down with a vessel. You went to okay. I still didn't get paid. address you there as in the people who let you go up the first time? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and their the, the colleagues. Because there was others who was calling me and giving me orders. People I know in Dominica. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But um, since I came, I came back from Dominica. They have been hiding. So, so in Saint Martin now. So there you are. You you say your talent helps you to kind of survive. Yes. How did you get? To, first, I want to go back a little bit to how did you learn to? How does a boy from Dodan? learn how to sail um well i still as i was saying i know about the the sea very well mm -hmm. and um 
I have using more of the other type of goods. Okay. So um, it was just the sale I had to make a research about. So I made a re research about the the sale, mm -hmm. and I could have I could do it. How how young were you when you started sailing? Uh, it's quite a while. Well, it's not in Dominica. Okay. Because most thing I learn is I would say is Guadeloupe. I only learn farming in Dominica. Okay. I operate also operating machine. Mm hmm Like excavator and stuff. Okay, like heavy machinery. Right. Okay. Okay. That's what you mean when you say your talent, because right. of your talents. Yes. 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 You were telling me something earlier about being twelve or thirteen, like what? Like you would you would go on the sea with? I want to yes, hear a little bit about your relationship with the sea. With the age of men. Yes. They used to go out on the little boat and fish, so I used to be going with them. Yes. We have small engines. Mm -hmm. They used to let me start the engine. Mm -hmm. And certain times, as I get in a custom, they would give me the boat, right? Yeah, to go and and get the fishing nets and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. then, um, when I leave, I leave Dominica at 15 years to go to Guadeloupe. There's where I finish learn everything. I should be doing um, fishing with certain people, and I was going all the way out there, mm -hmm. like from Guadeloupe, to Saint Martin, those places. So at 15, you left Dominica the first time? Yeah. Wow. Did you have a job yeah. lined up or, or how did that happen? Like No, um, no education. Um, it's just a little year experience construction mm -hmm. and, and farming what I, re I raise in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what I had when I leave at 15 years to go to Guadeloupe. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Guadeloupe gave me the opportunity to learn a lot of things like fishing in general mm -hmm. and construction mm -hmm. and operator, mechanic mm -hmm. and plenty of other little skills. I do craft also. Yes. What kind of craft? When you say that, what do you mean? Um, craft work like... Um, like woodwork? Yeah. Wow. That's all. A lot yeah. of um, different types. So... Um, so now, how did you come to be on that boat, on that one where you went adrift? Well, I the same the same set of people called me from Dominica mm -hmm. and asked and asked me to they want to go they want to go home, but I find the time they call me to drop them it was too late, so I put off my phone because I I, I realized something was wrong. And a um, couple of weeks after they recontact me, mm -hmm. and they tell me where the boat was and I had where I had to go from who they had to give me the keys. Mm -hmm. And um, so they, 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 they give the person my number, the person mm -hmm. called me mm -hmm. and they tell me where they could come for me. But um, I was at my, by my cousin when they come and pick me up. Mm -hmm. And um, they bring me to the boat mm -hmm. where they was with me and we when I reached there I see it had some work to be done on the boat. Okay. So um I start to do the work myself and the other people. Mm -hmm. The things I asked them for me to to go they didn't give it to me. Mm -hmm. So I end up of going with a a sick boat. A boat that not capable of doing the mission. Mm -hmm. They were calling me constant that they in Dominica come for them. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how I end up off when I reach in Dominica water. Mm -hmm. The phone that they give me to call them, it was not capable of calling. From where you were? Yeah. In the sea. Mm -hmm. So um, it had no GPS. Mm -hmm. what, no, um, it was just a simple phone, which they didn't know about it. They knew that would happen. So I went back all the way to St. Martin to call back, call them back. Mm -hmm. Because of the St. Martin phone I had. Yeah. And they still refused to answer the call. So I decided, well, um, I have to go anywhere. That convinced me. Mm -hmm. so it's, so on the way, it's on the way that um, the seal will get break. 
the stick still broke yes yeah so i had no other choice because the engine the battery was dead yes the engine had issue and the seal so mm -hmm. i had no other means no other ways than just with mm -hmm. yeah wow so there you are now just in the middle of the ocean right and and what well um well when the stick really break too is um I try to follow a little water mm -hmm. because there was water to drink. Okay. Um, there was a tank in the boat. There was a tank in the boat, but it was condemned. Okay. A but tank of water? Yeah, but um they wasn't using that for how long? Mm -hmm. But um so they had changed the, the containers mm -hmm. the style. So they had to remake the boat. So the, the container that was, that was condemned. That's how I get water to could um to could continue the journey. I used wow. to have um use a shirt to mm -hmm. use as a, a shifter so I could um suck out the muck from it and then mm -hmm. throw it and then get good water. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that started but, um, up on that twenty something. Yes, day. Go ahead. Yeah, twenty four days. I had give up couple, um some sometimes I give I had give up because um before I had the catch up mm -hmm. and stuff I had give up because um, my eyes could open mm -hmm. but my body couldn't function mm -hmm. so um I was trying to figure out what really I could eat because the strength had gone already mm -hmm. so um that's when I I see the, the catch up and um. The Bohayo, mm -hmm. that's the, um, the Maggie and the garlic season. Mm -hmm. So that is where I end up of realizing that I could put some water in it and make it like a gravy. Yes. The gravy would have, um, it would give me some energy. Mm -hmm. So I I decide um, I'm going to put them the ketchup and a little um, Maggie. Mm -hmm. And a bit more of the garlic garlic is more more um, garlic and ketchup because um that would give that have more vitamins it have more um it's more nourishing for the body mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So i was just putting a little bit of maggie but more of the ketchup and yeah yeah but it is it, it, it used to taste very good so um i had no problem of drinking it I see you smiling, Elvis. I see you smiling. <laughs> you remembering yeah. the taste was not that bad, yeah? Yeah, it was okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What it was, was it like okay. for you at night? What was it like for you at night? Oh, I could not sleep at night because um, I had no light on the boat. Mm. And now the, the, the container ships and the gas boats that pass in, they can't see me. So I know anytime... Um, Ah, while I sleep in, like you're in a I, dangerous, yes, yes. So every 30 minutes, I'll be up, my eyes would be open, yes. And uh, I used to be drinking a lot of water, mm -hmm. so I used to want to go in the toilet often. And so, you say you were drinking a lot of water, what kind of water? Because if you're in the sea. From the system, from the tank, I get uh, the condemned tank. From the condemned tank. From yeah. the condemned tank. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. So, you know, I I want to know, I want to ask uh, Winston to join you now. Winston is Peter Winston, who helped to coordinate the interview, y'all, and who's yeah. been supporting Elvis. We need a community around us after traumatic events, because even if you are now safe, your mind is not your mind is still not completely clear you're processing right elvis i know yeah you're trying to make sense out of things so i, I want to add wednesday hi wednesday hi hi dr trippin how are you <laughs> uh, dr trippin tonight dr trippin <laughs> tonight dr trippin tonight okay dr. Yeah, for sure. dr trippin yeah, so yeah, wednesday yeah. thank you so much Thank you so much for you're most welcome man 
Great so how job. did you get connected to Elvis? How did you? Well, myself and Elvis are basically neighbors. Yes. We're pretty close. We grew up together. Yes. And um, I think knowing of his history in the community, there had to be somebody to hold his back sometimes. Because, you know, all guns would come blazing. It's Elvis again and Elvis mm -hmm. again and Elvis not nowhere, but Elvis again. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So, you know, based on that, and he always listens to me, eh? One good mm -hmm. thing, my brother. Mm -hmm. So regardless of every other thing, I would say, hey, Elvis. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I cannot think. So, so I brought you in right now because I, I was about to start talking about the Heinz uh, situation. But right before I do that, Elvis, how did you get rescued? Um, well, it was a pretty nice parking. Mm -hmm. And um, they see this sign that I mark on the, um, on the, on the yacht. Yes. Help and um, they contact the Coast Guard, mm -hmm. and Coast Guard will give um, the container ship okay. the coordination where I was so that they could pick me up. What did you use to write help? What did you use to write the sign help on the boat? Um, well, the pin, the pin that I was using to um, pin the boat. Gotcha. Got you, got you, got you. And so, so they come and they take you. And how are you feeling when they take you? Where do they take you? How does that work out? Well, they, they take me on the boat, mm -hmm. and um, they had a doctor to check me right away. Okay. And they give me my first meal. You remember and, the uh, meal? Do you remember what they gave you? Um, yes, it was um, two slices of toast bread and cheese, <laughs> and. Um, there was um some some hot tea yes. and some oat, uh, um, oatmeal. How did that go down, Elvis? Well, I would say okay, but um, I just had to take it lightly because right, I could not have um it too much thing at the moment. Exactly. When you when you've been fasting, forced right. fasting, you can't just eat everything at once. So 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 then, how did you get from there to Dominica? Okay, well, from the um, there was the um, they made an interview mm -hmm. between them and myself, and then um, they had to start making um, the um, the documents and to get place for me to stay, and so um, from the dock where they we enter, mm -hmm. um, there is someone that come and get me. From the boat, mm -hmm. his name was Manuel, and um, he took me to the immigration so that they could know that I'm in the country. Mm -hmm. And I slept there for one night, mm -hmm. and the next day they bring me in a hotel. Um, that is where um, I first made contact to Dominica. Okay, I heard you say that Emo was a big help for you like you could remember emo to as somebody to reach out to to try to reconnect to dominica yes because um when i lost all my um i lost my phone and mm -hmm. my notebook and i had um i'd go through so much things to think of i couldn't um, remember anything at the moment so um mm -hmm. but i could only remember maybe i'm um, just type mo and you would get yes you get so um that was MO? <laughs> big up mo news <laughs> yeah that was the first person i think of mm -hmm. and so i explained them the people that was had me in charge had in charge of me mm -hmm. so let's try to contact them and that did happen yes so so that was the first number first number i had mm -hmm. yes, so. So, so now, how did you and Wednesday get connected when you did come home? Well, um, from St. Martin, I used to always text him. I used to always tell him about the situation. Mm -hmm. And um, while I was up there, too, I used to call him. Mm -hmm. Whenever I get the phone or I get to make a call, I would, would call him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Wednesday, you get involved and... 
how are you supporting Elvis right now? Well, I'm just basically trying to get him, you know, adjusted. Mm -hmm. But um, honestly, I, I still think Elvis needs a lot of help that I cannot provide. When you say that, what do you mean? Because Elvis still tells me he has difficulties even sleeping. You know, when somebody's back home and they can't even sleep, mm -hmm. that's a big problem right there. Yes, yes. You know, yes. and I, I recall this brother having so much energy that he would run around the community six, mm -hmm. ten times. Mm -hmm. And he had to go up to Ben to get something to come back by me. Mm -hmm. And he had difficulties going up. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. I'm like, hey, what's wrong? Something is wrong with you. That's not you. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so definitely um, it's maybe way above me mm -hmm. in terms of the adequate help that he requires at this moment. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. the little support that I can give, you know, being mm -hmm. around him, talking things over and just helping him chill. Yes, yes. You know. Yes, that's beautiful. Now, what, you, what you're talking about are post traumatic responses right so elvis you've been through a big trauma you know a traumatic event like how many people worry that they're going to die how many people have been in that situation not many and i heard you say that at one point you gave up like you just kind of surrendered eh you were like yeah. okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so what you what you're experiencing like having trouble sleeping maybe even some moodiness uh, forgetfulness, exhaustion, your mind feels like you can't think, it's kind of foggy, it's blocked. Those are all normal responses to a kind of situation like that. And so what you what is recommended is talking to a therapist, okay? Talking to a therapist. And so Wednesday, we're organizing that. Wednesday? Yeah, well, we have to work on this and, you know, I think every help from every angle that it can come is, is very important. Yes. At this moment, um, you know, you can't pretend to be a doctor when you're not. Mm -hmm. So this has to go to the professionals. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, let us hope for the best for him because it's, it's not just one being alive and all is well. Exactly. I can, I can safely say all is not well. I mean, can you imagine if the brother had to come back home and it's almost like you're coming back home, but you're still in doubt as to when, when you land, if you're going to be spending two more years in jail. So it's almost like telling yourself that, hey, it's best I was at sea still. Right. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And it's really traumatic for him. I, I, I you know, I, I don't know how to see it, but, you know, if you're thinking of coming home after being rescued, Mm -hmm. And then take, for example, even as we speak, first thing the brother had to do was go to the court to pay up some, some arrears on something after he was being brutalized. Wow. You know, and we, we're looking at petty offenses and that, petty offenses is you know. But and the offenses, not, like he said, were for, like he's talking about four trees? Is yeah, that yeah, four trees and, yeah, you know. Four trees in my backyard. Yeah, and they come right at my home and brutalize me and char and give me excess charge. Mm -hmm. And have me pay in what? Which I never get no help from nobody. Mm -hmm. Always going out there and try to work and try to bring in something in Dominica. Mm -hmm. So, um, I hope somebody's listening who can do something to mitigate. It's called mitigate. The situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope yeah, so. Right. Yeah, I hope. The people, so. the, some of the people need to. Um, they need to think straight because um, doing people certain things and um, you not it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because um, I see a lot of people are judging me, but um, I didn't see it. it's just that because they against some of them against me and what I capable of doing and um, what I can do. So it so, sounds as if you feel a bit misunderstood sometimes and not supported much. Right. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask you a question, a couple, a few questions about the whole experience, Elvis. 
So based on everything that's happened, and I'm going to say thanks, Winston, for joining us. I'm going to put you backstage for a second and um, bring you back by, you know, when I'm finished with Elvis in a little bit. I want to go through a process with Elvis. Elvis, I want to know when you were going through all of that, what was the, as you look at everything, right? What's been your most, what was the most painful part for you out of that experience? Like the, the thing that hurts you the most or that made you the most terrified? You mean on the boat or in well, yeah, the experience, the lost at sea, coming home, all of that. The whole the thing that hurts you the most from beginning to end in that whole experience. Because the way you describe it, it started off with having to go to St. Martin. Yeah. Yeah. So well, when you, you have to see um you build your home and for for misunderstood uh, understanding, mm -hmm. you have to go through all that. And you have to face face the situation. So mm -hmm. um, it's like um, because the, the, the person that put me in that situation, they still passing and calling me and want want to talk to me. But I'm still going through the the, the, the problem. It's very so you painful. see that yeah. when you have situation that to deal with is kind of yeah. It's very painful. Yeah. Now tell me. For the experience at sea, what was the most painful? Um, well, um, I would say um, when I go adrift, I didn't care kind of him because um, seeing what I'd go through, sometimes I say it's best I die than I have to come back to Dominica in that situation and um, what I was going through in Dominica. So you were feeling a lot of pain already then. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What was the, this is the opposite question. What was the biggest surprise or the biggest joy? Um, well, I would say um, when I get to know I was coming back, Dominica, mm -hmm. that was one of the biggest, yeah. It's interesting, eh? Because going the, the learning you were going to go back to Dominica was your biggest joy, but also you you had a lot of anxiety still too about it. So so that's yeah. interesting. Now here's another question. Based on that experience, what do you never want to happen again in your whole life? Um, I would say I believe travel without documents. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and based on that experience, the flip side, what do you want? Based on this, I want this. Um, you mean what terms? I... Well, based on that experience, this is what I want as I move forward in my life. Okay, what um, I would say is more agriculture, you know. It's when you say that, tell me more. It's more agriculture. I mean, I love the sea. Yeah. But I love agriculture more than the sea. Mm -hmm. But seeing that um, I had a lot of um, stuff, I had um, 149 different products I was growing. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you I had, had 149 of... different plants? Different. Yeah. Wow. So um, after I got the, the problem from the, from the court, I had to walk out from my property because... I used to be at my home and my father used to send stone after me just to get me um have confusion with him so that he would they, would, they could call the police to get me. So um because of that I leave my home. So you and your dad had had a lot of um Yeah, because um he made me um he gave me a piece a uh, piece of property mm -hmm. and when I work it and build my house and stuff. I see. So then he wanted to sell the place. Um, Confusion. So that bring um, I'm I'm not fighting for anything. I just want to be free. Mm -hmm. But and you're then, saying you what you would really want is to grow crops. Yes. To do agriculture. Right. Yes. Now, what's your biggest lesson you've learned from all of this? Your biggest lesson. Um, for me, Dominica is a press for me. Mm -hmm. And um. If I had 
just a few opportunities like what they had to offer then i could do much better and certain people um be not because they have what are attorney to represent them they should go in through all those things they're mistakenly because if somebody innocent is innocent not because they have what they're attorney they should go in through those things mm -hmm. because when you spoil somebody life or make them go through all those things that is the same people you have to see back in society mm -hmm. so so what's the lesson for you what did you learn that you well, will take um, with you to help you to move forward in life well help me move forward in life i watch life i would say kind of negative mm. because everybody after something mm. but is what we really after we what we're supposed to be after because i'm after the things of the lord mm -hmm. and not of society mm -hmm. so um if things come to me it come to me i accept it but i'm not going to lose my soul to go Thank after you. things that is why um, i had a lot of loss mm -hmm. um but i leave it unto the almighty mm -hmm. so um i believe i'm close to the almighty that is why i'm, I'm alive yes yes, may, yes people may judge me yes but um i know the life i live in yes i know what i what i am doing um like if i'm doing something mm -hmm. if it's by spite i doing it or um if i had had to do it for certain purpose mm -hmm. but i see a lot of people they just do things by malicious see they don't think what is going to, to what's going to happen to people they just want to destroy you so they just mm -hmm. so um so, I don't know a lot of different things in it. So I would say um I stay not speaking to people for a whole two months, I would say. Mm -hmm. And it saved me from having problem with people. Mm -hmm. So um I can hardly have conversation with young people. And um because they get they all caught up after the worldly things, nothing to the their maker. Mm -hmm. So I don't really have conversation with people. See? So so what I just heard from you is that perhaps the biggest lesson you've learned through all of this is why would I go after gaining the whole world but lose my soul? Right. And so to avoid losing my soul, I'm going to make certain choices. There are certain people I will avoid if I know it's going to cause negative interactions, negative feedback. And I'm going to focus on if the thing comes to me and it's good and it seems like it's of God, you'll hold on to it. But you're not going to push yourself towards some of these things because you've gotten into a lot of negative situations because of doing that. Right. Because um, somebody have to somebody living, they have to survive. But um, yeah. you can't go and be on what you're not supposed to do to survive. There you go. So um, there you go. a lot of people destroy their brothers and sisters in that way. Mm -hmm. They want everything for themselves. Mm -hmm. So um, that has destroyed a lot of their, 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 their brothers and sisters, which mm -hmm. doesn't see that. So you're, so you're saying, I see a path for me through agriculture and not so much the sea as I keep moving forward. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want I want to talk with Winsty. Winsty, I want to talk with you now about the Heinz situation. Because y'all, everybody knows by now that Heinz tomato ketchup, they got caught wind of the story and they said, we're looking for the tomato ketchup guy, speaking about Elvis, because they heard that Elvis had used ketchup to to, to save his life. Have you all heard from Heinz? Because Heinz is you know, I think there was a story, maybe even on CNN today, that they were still looking. But has Elvis, have you all connected with Heinz? I, I can, Doc, I can safely say that we have, in fact, connected with Heinz. Mm -hmm. But I am um, not too sure if I'm at liberty to disclose any conversation since mm -hmm. I was bystander and he had mm -hmm. a private discussion with them. Mm 
Okay. So I, I think I would leave it up to maybe the end of the product, <laughs> end of the day, so you can actually say, okay, that is a deal. Yes. That we actually yeah. cross the fines. But um, for now, I I don't think we are liberty to say anything. But at least but what you can say is that you all have met. With yeah, us. we definitely have made contact. Okay, very good. You know, okay. and um, it was sort of facilitated by MO again. Um, MO, big up yourself another time. So yeah, well, MO I'll still give hard. her the props. I'll still give her the props, even if she takes all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll still MO, give it to her. That's cool. That's MO, cool. thank you for all that you do. And I thought it was really um, telling that Elvis remembered... You know, well, if I need to have a big mic, you know, somebody who might be able to call, 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 let me think of, you know, my brain can remember MO. So, yeah, yeah. Um, that's he kind of surprised. Go ahead. Doc, he kind of surprised me as well, you know, because when, when this funny name showed up, some Paul something on Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, said, and I'm like, <laughs> with that person I'm seeing Elvis picture, but right. well, I never communicate to Elvis with this Paul person. Right. So I'm like, you know, but what happened then? I'm hearing from you what's, what's going on. Right. And, you know, he then told me that is he on there and blah, blah, blah. That's where what it is. And yeah. I say, okay, cool, cool, cool. So we link from there. Yes. And, you know, I was kind of really, really happy that he was alive because, you know, he told me on one occasion that he's going to be coming home soon. Yes. Uh, he had some concerns. He had, he really had some concerns as to when he returns, what he's going to do, and you know, especially with this this court matter, this this hanging over his shoulder, it was really kind of stressful for him. Poor Kaya plants. You know, I, I it, it's up to the system, but I, I think you know a lot of times people find find themselves walking the wrong road based on the fact that. You have injustice within the system, judicial errors. But um, however, I know that road. I know that road. And um, I don't want to join him and say that the magistrate may have been drunk, but no, no. I, I know that is very likely. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah, no, what, it's true. Really, it, it does seem like in my consideration to see what going through for four trees of marijuana. You can wake me up. But at my again, I, I can safely say, Doc, Elvis has been producing quite a lot. Mm. I used to buy stuff from him. And and the thing with him is he has his stall by the road, and you know, you want this, you want that. Just give him something. Just give him yeah. something. And he's cool with that. It's cool. Well, that. Here with Red Rock. Producing a productive man in the community, self-employed, working on the sea, working on the land, and four trees, his life goes mm -hmm. in chaos. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because, I mean, it, it really hurt me quite a bit, eh, to be honest with you, when Elvis came back and his pressure was like, he was in, when he was in Colombia before he moved to Puerto Rico, he was like, boss, but I know it's two months jail I'm going to take when I come down, so I'm going to burn my two, two months jail because I don't have the money to take care of that and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, boss, just stop stressing out yourself. Everything is going to be okay. Yeah. And he, he is almost like convinced that he's going to spend two months in jail as soon as he lands here after this mm -hmm. ordeal. It's just the terror, you know? It's just the terror. No, yeah. no, no. This man had to find himself in the court to make this payment while he doesn't have food to eat, mm -hmm. while he doesn't have a roof over his head. As a matter of fact, one of the burnt down houses, he has actually blocked an area of it mm -hmm. that he could fit in a bed. So that's where he stays. What kind of support do you think us as a community can offer to help Elvis get back on his feet? Because this is a productive man, like, you're, like he's saying, like you're saying, right? Very talented, very skilled. Mm -hmm. What kind of support in addition? Well, definitely he needs some mental health support. Anybody would after that kind of event. But what else? I, I definitely see, must say, from, first of all, Elvis needs somewhere to stay, somewhere comfortable to stay. Mm -hmm. You know, 
this, like I told him, the most, both issue is secondary with the science story and all of that. Mm -hmm. That is secondary. You need something to stay and you need something that can really generate something for you now. Right. So you have stuff to take care of. Mm -hmm. And um, even with he and his kids, mm -hmm. you know, the mere fact that you're under steady pressure, you cannot even afford to, to take care of your kids or even see your kids. Mm -hmm. You know, so even those things brings on an additional pressure on a young man. Yeah. Because those are your fruits in here, and you cannot take care of growing them properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what that's that's to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, the average person is going to find it hard. Mm -hmm. And he's just come out under so much stress. And you're a human being, and when we lose so so much of our emotional resources, things we used to be able to do, like in a shake, it can seem a lot more challenging. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm praying that we are responding to Elvis in the community in a way that supports him, helps him get back on his feet. Yep, I definitely need it. think he needs you know proper accommodation. He needs somewhere to stay comfortably. Mm -hmm. He needs at least you know for to set the the base because if your body is not energized, there's no way you're gonna produce. Mm -hmm. you cannot yeah, yeah. work properly if your body is not properly energized if you're not getting rest mm -hmm. half an hour rest yeah. is not a boat story anymore yeah <laughs> you need to rest so you know you could be strong oh, enough yeah. to move on yeah so what that is that? already a yeah yeah it takes a little while but it i you know i will speak with you all one-on-one -on -one. It, it, it will take some intervention to support him it doesn't have to be so hard you know, is the thing. It does not have to be so hard. And Would appreciate. It does not have to be so hard. Elvis? Hello, yes. Can I tell you thank you so much for sharing your heart with us, with me tonight? It's a pleasure. Yes, yes, yes. I, You know, all of us are human beings. And like you say, some people... You know, they don't really know all of you. Lots of people have opinions about you, whatever. Yeah. We are all human beings. We have yeah. our lives. Mm -hmm. But I, I wish for you the best, man. I wish the best for you. Um, Winsty, thank you so much. I will know. Yeah, I, I want to take some of the comments from people who've been following us and listening for the entire hour. I want to encourage you to keep sharing your story because... The more we talk about stressful yeah. things, stressful events. Just gonna tell her that the group here. What you say? What you saying, Winston? Wait, I'll, I'll put Winston in the back for a, for a minute. But Elvis, yeah, yeah. the more we talk about painful events, yeah. is the more we take the edge off it. It's a way yeah, to that, heal. Yeah, that's why sometimes I try to talk. To... Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Talk until you weep in a. Okay, talk yeah. until you weep in a. To whomever has the ear for you to listen to you to because the more you talk about it is the more sense it's going to start making for you yeah. Back. yeah okay okay so who's here we have dini dini said good evening somebody said yes sir oh somebody said their sister was also on the boat that my mom was on and um winston's sister was also on the boat Good evening, Colson. Hi, Jackie. Jackie says, Elvis, that she's happy you made it. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Evelina. Everglow says, good evening. And Evelina says, blessings to you, Elvis, and that God is good. You're welcome. Yes, yeah, somebody else is saying, hey, Elvis. Pamela says, good evening. Anthony, okay, somebody is eight minutes away from Red Rock, so he's close to where you are right now, Elvis. Brandy, Genia says, amen, brother. Oh, Idris LeBlanc says, a GoFundMe would help. So that's something for Winsty to think about setting up. I think that's a good idea as well. A GoFundMe could help. Okay. Wesley now online is on. Hi, Randy. How are you? Evelina wishes you the best. Okay, Elvis. Okay, thank you. 
And Colton says, oh my God, he's a hero. And Colton thinks that God will have a way for you. You know, I was, what was I talking about or reading recently? It seems, Elvis, when we get to that place that you just described, where you said, look, I have to come to a realization that what sense is it for me to gain the whole world and lose my soul? That's about humility, right? That's about learning to be humble and realizing it's not everything. All money is not good money. I know. Even if I'm desperate, all money is not good money because it, it's making a lot of ugly little babies. A lot of mess, you know, can come out of that. And so that's a powerful lesson, I think, that you are sharing with us. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, well, you see, the delicate people, they do they do the thing to please the, the, the Almighty. They do it with a willing heart. Yes. They don't receive any allow ones to do it yeah put it on their own will yeah see, so um people do look at those people people you see mm -hmm. so it is you should be able to identify the good ones or the ones that um the chosen ones mm -hmm. the chosen people of the almighty mm -hmm. sometimes that's a little mm -hmm. hard because you know sometimes people come yeah. you know like you say like wolves and sheep's clothing you know yeah somebody else says they wish you the best elvis i wish you the best life hasn't been easy for you we're all from the village we know but this is a new day for you another chance to make a go at it again what do you think about that when you hear that this is a, one of your villagers uh, um i know there is people are there for me yes okay so i I thank, still thank them for concern about me. Yes, yes. So, yeah. And you know, sometimes we don't need everybody. We just need a few good people right. around us to keep us straight, to keep us duet, compitent. Yeah? Yeah, because so far I have my cousin yeah. helping me out. And um, she, never, never let, she never let me down, so... Yeah, you talked about a brother, one of your brothers. I heard you saying you had a brother that helped you. Yeah, yeah in Guadeloupe, he's in Guadeloupe. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, he used to uh, make all the calls for me. Mm hmm So yeah. that um, I could get my birth paper and stuff. Your documents for immigration and stuff. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. Look, um, Lifetime, Lifetime movies. <laughs> I know. Lifetime movies, lifetime movies. Okay, um, Netflix. <laughs> All right. So um, here's Evelina. Evelina says, "Doctor, loads of love." That's right, Evelina. Let's love each other. All for each, and each for all. You know, we're a community. We are people who know how it is to share. Mm, to do cool me good men, give each other a hand. We might have forgotten that for a little bit, but we got to get back online to doing what we do well, which is to support each other. Okay. So Elvis, as we start wrapping up for the night, what, what are some of, what, what are some thoughts you want to share as we close? What are some thoughts you want to share with the people who are listening? With well, me? Um... I would say, um, well, um, if they had given me the chance that I needed, maybe that not, I will not be in that um, situation. Mm -hmm. Because and I can forward, what do you want? Because you did not get that chance up till now, but today, looking at today as a new day, what do you want? What do you hope? Well, um, Well, I can't really think of, but anything is okay with me because um, it's not me that make life, mm -hmm. and I'm not in control of anything. So, mm -hmm. on that, I can't really um, determine. If, if say, if you had a magic wand, right? If, if, if you could say, I could have it the way I want it. How would it be? 
Well, I'll say I don't really think of things because um, my creator provides everything for me, all the means and ways. Mm -hmm. So when something has to happen, mm -hmm. through his free will, it happens. So yes. I don't make decisions. Yes. So, yes. You're in a place of surrender, it sounds like, and acceptance. Right. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Wednesday, I'm going to bring you back on as we start saying thank you to everybody for tuning in, listening to Elvis's story. We, again, are people of storytelling. Storytelling is good for us. It's the way we process our trauma, our pain, and we get to the lessons. Like Elvis is getting to his lesson of surrender. And as he says, waiting on God. And learning how to watch all money and say, no, no, I'm not going to lose my soul, even if I gain the whole world. So, Winston, what are some of your thoughts as we close? Well, first of all, Doc, I, I, I must say I appreciate the fact that, you know, you have actually brought him on. So, you know, you could get the exposure, shares, get the opportunity to speak as well. Yes. Oh, sorry. My tripping. Yeah, so um again I, I must thank everybody, including you know the, the staff right here mm -hmm. at Red Rock. Yeah. She's also part of a team that we we actually doing some um donations within the communities. We're covering from Marigot, I think all the way to Pebush. Mm -hmm. Is it? And um you know, most likely we should be presenting a little food hamper to to Elvis. So, so Very this, nice. this, you know, I, I must say I appreciate that from them so far. Yeah. And um, again, any other help that could come through for him, then I would say thank you in advance. Yes. We would really appreciate this. I, I know he's not going to ask for nothing. If yeah. I know him well. And, uh, he's right. Yeah. You know, but then we're yeah. grateful. We're grateful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Colson says, just be of good courage, my brother. It will come to pass. Okay. And Randy says, without a story, you cannot have glory. And you've got a story. You've got a story. And you know, God allows these. In Dominica, we believe this, that life, God, these things happen. And we, we find a way for them to happen for our best interest, as in, there's a reason for everything we say and we say god will make a way out of no way okay and finally i have a comment from franklin franklin is going to take us home tonight and he's going to allow elvis to take a little rest elvis was having trouble sleeping but elvis you are very sleepy now i hope you have a wonderful sleep tonight I, hope I you will sleep try. Well I will try for five minutes. I for however long, for however long, I pray you get some rest tonight. Okay. And no. Franklin is telling you, my brother, you are here with us for a reason. Jano. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Y'all, everybody, thank you so much, Winsty again. Thank you so much, Elvis. I wish you the best. I will be in touch with you and Winsty. Okay. Okay. Y'all, you're welcome. Thanks for having us on here, Doc. Yeah, you okay. are welcome. Thanks again. Thank okay. you. Okay, you're welcome. Bye bye. Bye.